Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you are currently on a weight loss or fat loss journey and you are tracking your calories, but you find it very difficult to stick to your calorie goal, you tend to go over your calorie goal, then this video is for you. These are my top five tips to help you stick to your calorie goal. And I use these tips myself when I am in the depths of a fat loss phase, meaning my calories have gotten pretty low, I'm hungry, I will use these five tips to really help me stick to my calorie goal so that I can see the weight loss slash fat loss progress that I want to see. And I have my notes written on my phone, so I will be referencing that here. So tip number one is that I, and my meals with a protein smoothie. So I will do two cups of water, a scoop of protein powder, and then a cup of frozen strawberries or frozen blueberries. And what that does is it helps fill my stomach up with liquid. And so when you fill your stomach up with liquid and with protein from the protein powder, you will find that you are quite full and you don't have room to overeat on calories. So usually what I'll do is I'll have a taco, so I'll have a low carb tortilla, I'll have a little bit of chicken breast, maybe like two to four ounces of chicken breast, a sprinkle of Mexican shredded cheese, some salsa on that, and that'll be like my main meal that I'm actually eating food, because I do like the the act of eating, but then I will also pair that with a protein smoothie, like I just said, with two cups of water. I'll throw in ice there, a scoop of protein powder, maybe two scoops of protein powder if I'm feeling super hungry, and then a cup of berries or whatever fruit you want to add with your protein smoothie. Or you can literally just do water and protein powder if you're a thug. If you like that, that's totally fine. But again, pairing my meal with a protein shake or protein smoothie, that additional water helps fill me up. So I don't even want anything after I'm having that taco and that smoothie. I don't even want anything after that because I'm so full. But I've noticed that when I don't pair my meal with a protein smoothie, I still have room in my stomach and I still kind of want to munch on something. It's usually something that is sugary that probably is gonna make me go over my calorie goal. So I have noticed that when I pair my meals with a protein smoothie, it is a game changer. And I will, I, I will decrease my meal size. So like the taco that I mentioned, instead of having two tacos, which I might normally do, I'll just have one taco to account for the additional calories that I'm having with that protein smoothie. So that is tip number one. Um, also, instead of a protein smoothie, I mean, you could do a low calorie soup, but the idea is high protein, and a lot of liquid to help keep you full because those two things plus fiber can help you really stay satiated for a long time and can just help fill you up and not make you wanna continue eating. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to save your calories for when you actually want to eat them. So a lot of people find that they're not hungry when they work, but they feel like they should eat breakfast and lunch because they've been told that to have a healthy metabolism, to have a healthy body, you have to have breakfast, you have to have lunch. And this advice is going to be different for everybody. I do find some women feel better when they have breakfast. I am not one of those women. I, I've done intermittent fasting, I don't eat breakfast, and I've done that for over, I wanna say 10 years of my life. Um, so it's not an absolute necessity to have breakfast. It's not an absolute must. You will hear controversial advice on this, but. I know in my experience and a lot of women I know, they don't need to have breakfast. Again, if you feel better eating breakfast, then feel free to do that. But I personally like to save my calories for when I actually want them, which is usually later in the day. I find I'm more snacky, I have more cravings closer to nighttime. So I will save my calories, majority, majority of my calories for the nighttime. So I don't, like what I've noticed is when I eat more during breakfast and lunch, I will still have those cravings at nighttime. So then I just end up going over my calorie goal. But what's really worked for me is again, keeping breakfast usually non-existent. I don't eat breakfast. I usually just have water, maybe a cup of tea, and then I'll have lunch or a late breakfast, like around 10 a.m. But again, I'll save majority of my calories for around dinner time. And then I can also implement a dessert, which I love having at the end of each night. And that tip has really helped me stick to my calorie goal because I save my calories for when I actually want them. So I don't really waste calories at unnecessary times where I'm not really hungry. I'm not really craving things. And I can keep 
keep my mind on other tasks like work or client calls, stuff like that, and I'm not even thinking about food. So that is tip number two. Tip number three is to prioritize protein, lean protein, I should say, and fibrous vegetables at every meal or at the majority of your meals. I do this when, again, my calories get very, very low, and so I will usually do like chicken breast or 99% lean ground turkey, 96% lean ground beef, things like that, or um, sa salmon isn't very lean, but I do like it because it does have healthy fat, so salmon or shrimp or halibut or cod, all those things, lean proteins, and then I'll pair that with a fibrous vegetable, usually broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, um, I do like asparagus and green beans, and then the key to these um, high protein and fibrous vegetable meals is pairing it with seasonings and condiments slash sauces that you actually enjoy. That's what's going to make the meal taste good. And there are so many condiments and sauces out there that you can mix and match and make each meal feel different. I like Asian stir fry sauce, teriyaki sauce, Thousand Island dressing, Caesar salad dressing, um, avocado mayo, regular mayo, ketchup, salsa, marinara sauce, pasta sauce. And the key is obviously to make sure that you're accounting for those additional calories. So making sure you're weighing out your sauces and then tracking them with whatever tracking app or tool that you are using. But again, it's so crucial that you actually enjoy the meals that you have. So I only use as little of condiment or sauce as I need to make the meal enjoyable so I'm not wasting my calories. But mixing and matching your condiments and sauces, again, really help make that protein slash vegetable meal taste delicious. Again, you can mix and match if you want to make it different and to make it exciting, use different seasonings. Um, but honestly, I, this is like advice I'm sure you'll hear from so many weight loss coaches or people who are talking about calorie deficits, but it's because it works. Prioritizing protein and vegetables, it works. It's low calorie, it'll fill you up, it keeps you satiated, it, I mean, it's healthy for your body, has so many nutrients and vitamins, it's not the most exciting, but that's where the condiments and sauces do come in. So that is tip number three. Tip number four, um, I briefly mentioned, but it is to practice intermittent fasting. You do not have to, intermittent fasting is not a magical fat loss pill, but why it's so popular is because it helps so many people stick to their calorie deficit. They find it is easier to keep their calories in a small window rather than try to spread their calories out over the entire day and then have a, have meals with very little calories in them. And I am one of those people who find intermittent fasting very helpful to stick to my calorie deficit. So like I previously mentioned, I usually have my first meal around 10 a.m. And then I will have my last meal around 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. So that's about an eight-hour eating window. Um, and so I, it's a lot easier for me to stick to my calorie goal when my calories are low, when I keep myself to that eight-hour feeding window and then have bigger meals because I don't like having meals that are, you know, 100, 200 calories or just super small calories. I like to have bigger meals. I like to be able to really eat, sit down, enjoy my food. Um, and so to be able to do that, putting my food in an intermittent fasting window in an eight hour feeding window has been very helpful. Now, like I previously mentioned, some women find that they either have hormonal imbalances or they just don't feel their best if they don't prioritize breakfast in the morning. If that's you, disregard this advice. You can totally try it out if you want, but if you find that you don't feel good with intermittent fasting or maybe maybe you already have hormonal imbalances, then again, disregard this advice. But this has been a pivotal, pivotal habit that I've used for years that has helped me stick to my calorie goal. So I wanted to put this one in there in case you find it helpful as well. So that is tip number four. All right, so my last tip, tip number five, is to track your calories beforehand. So many people will track after they eat. And the issue with that is if you just track after you eat, you can't actually know whether or not you're sticking to your calorie goal. At, at that point, once you eat and then track it, you may see, oh shoot, that meal was super high in calories, I'm over my calorie goal. 
I can't do anything now because I already ate the food. But if you track that meal that you think you want to have beforehand, you can already see whether or not it fits into your calorie goal. And so when you pre-track it, then you might see, oh shoot, if I have this meal, I'm gonna go over my calorie goal. So what ingredients could I decrease or just take out so that this meal fits into my calorie goal? So planning in advance, even if it's just five minutes before you eat, you don't even have to do the whole day or the day before if you don't want to, but tracking your meal before you eat it is a crucial, pivotal habit to ensure that you're actually staying within your calorie goal. Again, because if you track after you eat, the food is gone, you've already eaten it, you can't, uh, you can't undo what you did, you've already gone over your calorie goal for the day and so it is what it is, you know? So making sure that you pre-track your meals is vital, absolutely vital, all right? So I hope you found this video helpful if you are currently on a weight loss or fat loss journey. If you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, with one-on-one -on -one nutrition and fitness coaching, then please head to www.teamevolve.co, that is .co. And if you wanna see more from me on Instagram and TikTok, then you can follow me at Vivian No or at Vivian No with an underscore at the end. That one is on TikTok. I'll put them both on the screen above. And if you want to see more from me and you want to hear the tips that have helped me lose 30 pounds and keep it off, then go ahead and click this video right here. And otherwise, again, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.